Hi everyone, um, in this video we're going to be talking about the processes that we can use to test for cations and anions. Um, so I'm going to be using the document camera to outline um, a flowchart that we can use to identify uh, firstly starting with cations. Okay, so what we are starting with with cations, um, that is positive ions, <clears throat> we're interested in finding out ways to detect um, one of these six ions. So we've got lead, barium, calcium, copper 2+, plus, and then Fe2+, plus and Fe3+. Plus. So what we want, we, we want to establish a really simple kind of flowchart or a process that we can use to then to, to isolate each one. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to start with is addition of sodium chloride. What that's going to do is that we're going to get a white precipitate with one, which is going to be lead 2+. plus. Okay. Um, all of the other um, ions in this set won't precipitate. So the next thing that we're going to do to add to the remainder, or if we don't get a precipitate, we're going to add sodium sulfate. What we will see is we'll get two substances will precipitate, the rest won't. So we'll get white precipitate, and that's with barium and calcium, and then the remainder won't. Okay, so what we can do then to identify um, for barium and calcium we do a flame test, so we put samples of them in a flame and we get pale green is barium, so I'll slide it up just a little bit, and um, a reddish colour is our calcium. Okay, so we can use that to identify. Okay, so if we got no precipitate with sodium sulphate, the next thing that we add is sodium hydroxide. Okay, so what happens then is that we can either get a white, we'll get a precipitate with the remaining three, we'll get a white, brown, or blue. If it's blue, it's copper. Um, and if it's white, we get Fe2+, and brown, it's Fe3+. The only problem with these is that very quickly our white iron 2 hydroxide will oxidise in the air or will change in the air to form um, the brown um, iron 3 oxide hydroxide. So what we can do is that to, to further kind of discriminate these two, we add the, a sample of this iron which is called thiocyanate. We get a really bright red colour with Fe3+. It's very distinctive. It almost looks like blood. And then if it remains yellow, it's Fe2+. Okay, there are additional confirmation tests we could do if we particularly wanted to, but these are kind of the bare minimum sort of things that you would need to know. Okay, so sodium chloride, sodium sulfate, and then from there we would either do the flame test or the sodium hydroxide, depending on whether we got a precipitate or not. Okay, now let's have a look at our anions. Okay, so our anions are somewhat simpler because we've only got a set of four to look at. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that we would do is add nitric acid. Okay, um, now the reason that we wouldn't add, say, sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid or phosphoric acid or carbonic acid is because all of those ions, all, all, all of their, their conjugate ions are in the set that we're looking for. So we would actually be contaminating our sample and we'd get a false positive, we would say. Whereas nitrate, the, the conjugate for this one, is not present in our set. So we're not adding in anything that's going to contaminate our result. Okay, so what we would see when we add it to a sample that contains one of these ions, we're going to get bubbles. And we get bubbles when we, for um, the carbonate ion, because we're getting um, the hydrogen ion in the acid reacting with the carbonate ion to form carbon dioxide gas and water. Okay, so that, that's quite characteristic. So then the, re the other three ions will, won't do that. Okay, the next step that we would do, um, we would add ammonia to neutralize the acid then we would add calcium, a source of calcium ions, so like calcium nitrate, for example. Okay, that then we're going to get a precipitate with phosphate, um, but not with either sulfate or chloride. Okay, so that's our that's our second step. 
Okay, now the reason that we neutralize it is that um, we want to make sure that there's no acid left, but also the, the acidity of the solution when we add the calcium will affect whether um, you know, some things will be soluble and some things will be insoluble. When we've made it neutral, calcium phosphate is insoluble. So that's, that's what we're kind of looking for. Okay, and so then the last thing, or the, the, the next thing that we can add is we add a source of barium ions. What we would get is that we get a white precipitate if it's sulfate. Okay, just like we are used in previously to actually test for barium. Um, whereas then if we get no precipitate out of our set, we can identify that it's chloride. But if we wanted to actually further confirm that it's chloride, which is always a smart decision, you know, because just the, the absence of a result is not always a result in itself, we can add silver ions. Okay, because what we will, it'll do, it'll form a nice white precipitate that will change um, to a, a purplish colour, it will change colour in the presence of UV light. Okay, so what that does is that, that provides some confirmation for us that chloride is the ion that is present, aside from just narrowing it down from our set. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.